few years back, Davy Rothbard decided that somebody, somewhere, should do a magazine that was made up entirely of orphan shopping lists and missing pet notices, love notes, photographs, anything really. Now, people all over the country send him this stuff, and it can be funny and sometimes heartbreaking. He is in day two of a 50-state tour, traveling around, promoting the book. It's the best lost, tossed, and forgotten items from around the world. Please say hello to Davy Rothbard. Oh, Davey. Found is just basically a collection of notes, letters, photographs, you know, anything really that people have found in the grass, in alleyways, in the ocean, and they send it in to us, and we just slap it together into this magazine. And what I love is just this whole community aspect of it, because it's just a gigantic collaborative art project. So I realized that, that there were finds in the book from every single state. We figured the best way to bring found to the people is take it on the road. So my brother and I, we bought a van on eBay, and we set out for eight months, 50 states. This is one of my favorites. It came from L.A. It says, Jesse, I did not take anything. I know there's no convincing you once you've made up your mind. And although I cannot offer you any other explanation as to what happened to it, that doesn't mean I did it. How could I have? You say your car was locked and Katie had the keys? Anyway, I don't need to take something of yours when I can get my own. It doesn't make sense. But here's a replacement. Because I can't stand it when you think I've wronged you, Mom. I've been collecting this kind of stuff since grade school. It always amazed me how powerfully you could connect with someone just by reading this little half-page love note that you picked up blowing across the grass. Found notes and letters open up the entire range of human emotion. People reveal their true character when they think no one else is looking. They compose this collective hidden diary of our society. Dear Ron, the longer I think about what I'm doing, the sicker I feel. Ron, I'm sorry, but I don't think we should continue to have a relationship together, at least not as a couple. I love you, but things have not been the same since we found out that we were related. <laughs> Some of the most hilarious and heartbreaking stuff that we get comes from kids. These found notes are snapshots into a time in their life that these kids may never forget. Sometimes it seems like it might be the first time in these kids' lives that they're really facing and expressing a certain emotion. Dear Mommy and Daddy, I know it's hard for you to stop. I don't want to be rude, but I really want you to stop. Please, for me, Mommy and Daddy, don't bring it in the house. It makes a greater chance of us getting kicked out of here. I do get scared. Please, Mommy and Daddy, I love you. I just don't like it when you do it. Love, Eliza. The economy of language, you know, for in 82 words to get such a powerful sense of this poor girl and her situation, you know, to me, that, that's pretty amazing. Part of the joy and intrigue in finding something is the kind of imaginative process that ensues. This stuff, it haunts you. It's a riddle. You know, it just leaves you wondering what happened? What's the rest of the story? So many of these notes revolve around love and relationships. They range from being really funny to really sad to the ones that have both. You start laughing and then at the end you just uh, realize how terrible a situation it really is for the person and it kind of makes you wince. Um, this woman, I guess she's involved with two different guys. So she's listed the bad things and good things. Bad things, Andrew, crazy. <laughs> Paul, crazier. <laughs> Andrew is torn between Stacy and I. Paul is too childish. And then, and then the good things. Andrew, I married him. <laughs> Paul has a house. <laughs> Andrew, sex. Paul, money. <laughs> it's sort of a thrill for me to relate to some of these people, you know, to realize maybe they're going through some of the same things. You know, even if you read a love note, and you're just like, oh my God, you know, I've written that same pitiful love note. There's a lot of angry notes. These might represent notes that we've wanted to write, or we might have even deserved getting this kind of note. Even though they're negative and nasty, there's almost a sense of satisfaction and justice that someone got put in their place. Thanks to you, my handicapped wife could not get into our house. I hope you die on the way back to Michigan. Red Wings suck. You. <laughs> I cannot remember anything about the content of a specific class any more than I can recall the most boring moments of my life. 
the educational value was so phenomenally low that my frustration grew into hatred for her. And then it became more widespread, affecting my family and friends and possibly people I had never met before until I finally reached the point where I hated myself for being there. I really like the found to-do list. You know, people will just list all these small mundane things and then something grand or peculiar. It says to-do. Email Corey, introduce him to lesbians, <laughs> and continue to convince self that I'm not madly in love with him. <laughs> Goals. One, go to church, find God, then find myself through him. Get baptized. Two, party a lot. Meet new people. Start drinking once a week. Be social. My mom met my dad at a party. Don't forget that. A lot of these objects are a testament to loss. We got lots of flyers and notices, and you know, that they, they give you a direct insight into somebody's mind and heart, into a whole world of desire and delight and disappointment, anger and hope. I set it on top of the car when I put my baby daughter into her car seat. She had been cranky and fussy and crying since 6 a.m. until something finally tickled her fancy and she laughed her wonderful baby laugh, and I forgot about being broke. I forgot about my anxiety over being a new parent. I forgot about imminent war. I forgot my jacket. Some of these notes are just so funny. You know, there's these outrageous displays of comic brilliance. Even the style of writing, or the lack of basic grammar, is good for a laugh. Sometimes, you know, you buy a book at a used bookstore or something, and there's already an inscription in it. Well, the book is The Communist Manifesto. And the inscription is written, to my parents. May you one day understand the seeds of discontent that motivate my very will to live and fight for the betterment of humankind. Love, John. This was found in Minneapolis. It's all typed out. He sat down to work out his monthly budget. You know, rent, 600. Cell phone, 50. Food, 500. Liquor, 600. <laughs> Laundry, 30. Crack, 600. Attorney, 250. I love the found photos. Some of them are just flat out hilarious. And, and some of them are just, they just sort of have this understated beauty where someone who sort of inadvertently took this picture that's just amazing. There's, there's things you can learn from these little fortunes you pick up. There's lucid reminders of the important things. You know, sometimes when you find this stuff, you wonder if you found it or if this stuff found you. I hope people do take something away from these farm parties. I hope they leave feeling a little more open to the world around them. It could mean picking up pieces of paper that are blowing down the street, or more significantly, it's a matter of opening yourself to the actual people, to actually let them into your life, and to talk to them for a minute and encounter them and feel what they're feeling. These notes have helped me to do that, and it's made my daily life richer. <laughs>